Three for the Money is brought to you by the Trend Center app. This is the best tool for sports betting research. The Trend Center app, you can test betting systems from the past 20 years, explore thousands of existing trends and systems from top betting experts, choose from hundreds of filters to test different systems for each sport. Save these trends and get notified when their systems have games. Download the app and use our code TFTM for 15% off a premium membership after a two-day free trial. Okay, okay, okay. We're here. We're back. Street for the money. New episodes every Thursday per use. And uh, this is brought to you by the Trend Center app. Uh, link in our bio. This is the perfect tool for sports bettors. The greatest tool on the planet for sports bettors, actually, some are saying. Um, start a premium membership uh, with a 15% off discount uh, using the link in our bio or the code TFTM. Uh, it's been helping a lot with uh, baseball season and should the nba just started up and uh it's been helping us with that um but yes let's uh well it just started so not really but um but, but moving on okay uh week six is done right now we're on to week seven or is this week eight this week eight all right we're on I week think. eight i have week eight written down so i hope it's yeah right. <laughs> all right um so it's it's week eight um, and I got to tell you, boys, I'm down. I, uh, I don't know if I'll ever have another winning week. It's very depressing. I went four and five, uh, which I know is not too bad, but, uh, going, I didn't tally up my wins and my losses until like three or four hours ago. Uh, so vibes were pretty low. Uh, vibes are still pretty low. Uh, because the Titans are selling, and uh, I don't think they'll ever be good uh, ever again. Uh, but uh, that, that's, uh, that's, that's not this part of the pod we're talking about, so I will move on to uh, Chris. Chris, do you think I will ever be good at betting? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I do know you did better than me last week. Uh, I went 3-7 and seven on, sh- on picks I gave out on the show. It was... It was very bad. It was very, very bad. But Silver Lining, you follow us on Twitter. I pretty much made up for that with my Mike Evans first touchdown bet, plus 950. You know, not a big deal. But, yeah, in terms of picks I gave on the show, it was it was bad. It was very, very bad. Surefire lost. And just a couple bets that I would bet again that I was just on the wrong side of. The Surefire Commanders Panthers over 51 and a half. One team scores 40 and it still doesn't go over. Yeah. Uh, Packers minus what? Minus three. Um, they win by one. Uh, yeah. Just a lot of shit like that. Just some bounces. And then I tried to get cute with a few dogs, the Dolphins and the Giants. That was just stupid. So bad luck just mixed with stupidity was. Pretty, pretty terrible Sunday, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but, you know what? Uh, we'll bounce back. It's week eight. All right. Well, well Sean, how are you? Um, yeah, I didn't have a 13-3 and three week last, like last week or two weeks ago. Um, I went five and six. Hit my surefire. So, really, six and six, I guess. Kind of broke even on the weekend, uh, but I had to wait till Monday night uh, to cash the, uh, the Ravens Bucks over, which was awesome. Told y'all, uh, I, I took it. Yeah, good man. But <laughs> the Bucks almost backdoored that. <laughs> they yeah, they, all, they, they almost, almost backdoored, backdoored that. that. Yeah, <laughs> Chris Godwood sacrificed his season for that. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that was uh, I I was I was like the overhead, and I was like, eh, I'll keep watching. I won't just go to bed. <laughs> and then 
they just started scoring. I'm like, oh my gosh, this could be a double winner. Uh, it wasn't. Much like everything in my life, going rough. Not really. That's an exaggeration. Anyway, we're moving on. It's week eight. Let's talk about some games. Some take some games that haven't happened yet that we're gonna bet on that we're gonna win some money. Uh, okay, first game I'm gonna talk about is Falcons Bucks divisional matchup. Bucks are home dogs by two and a half. The Buccaneers, I think they've lost like half their team uh, in the span of like a week. Uh, I think that's pretty crazy. Um, but it's incredibly unlikely that Chris Godwin's coming back. Uh, either they haven't put up the severity of the Mike Evans injury, um, but that's like uh, that's like three quarters of their offense right there. Uh, so I don't know what they're going to be able to do, uh, but I am going to start this one off, and I'm going to take the Falcons. Uh, I normally don't bet on the Falcons. Uh, because I just feel like they've always been kind of like a team like the Titans, where they just like let you down whenever you you count on them the most. Uh, but I was looking at the Trend Center today. I got a stat. All right, here's my stats. Uh, road divisional teams who lost their previous games, who are now favored, are 135, 63, and 6 against the spread. So I'm taking Falcons minus two and a half, uh, and I'm calling it because I need help from the Trend Center. Uh, I can't be trusted to make my own decisions. Uh, that being said, uh, the rest of the games are my own decisions. But we're starting off this week with a win, and I'm throwing it to Sean. What is next? What do you got? Uh, this one's pretty simple for me. Uh, it's the over, over 46. Uh, currently, uh, Falcons are on a three game over streak, uh, when the total is set at 46 or below, uh, bucks are just on an overall heater, uh, with a four game over win streak. Uh, so let's just keep it going. Um, the last matchup they had was probably the best Thursday night game we'll get this entire year. So, uh, let's just, let's just keep it rolling. Uh, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin both being out is definitely a bummer. Uh, and this makes it a lot more sweaty than it needs to be. But Baker, still slinging it. Um, and I think this uh, opens up the Bucks playbook a bit and gets players more involved like Kate Otten and uh, Rashad White, uh, who, who had a great – both had great games against the Ravens. So, uh, yeah, give me the over. Love this over. Chris, what you got? I'm a little nervous because I do agree with Will. <laughs> the Falcons minus two and a half. Um, uh -oh. I, it's, it makes me nervous because, like, <laughs> yes, like I feel like half of the Bucks' offense is hurt. Why is it two and a half? I know it's in Tampa. Creamsicle game, I believe, makes me a little nervous. But I'm Ryan the Falcons. I'm Ryan Kirk Cousins. Um, I also have a stat for this one. Kirk Cousins in his career after a straight up loss is 40 and 26 against the spread. So let's get a little bounce back, Kirk. Um, yeah, really nothing crazy on this. I I honestly I don't love this. It feels too easy, but you know what? We're taking the birds. So Falcons minus two and a half. All right. Moving on to the next game. Another game featuring birds uh talking eagles Bengals. the Bengals are home favorites by two points uh the eagles uh it seems like there's some trouble in uh eagle land if cheesesteak i don't know uh in philadelphia uh they hate their coach they keep yelling at him everyone wants him fired they keep winning games um but it's uh not not all is uh is good over there. Uh, I'm gonna throw it to Chris first. What do you think? Hold on, before you do. Okay. Um, just a little refresher. Do you guys remember how the last time these two teams met, how that ended? No. Is that that overtime game? Yes. Maybe maybe the worst ending in all of NFL history that I've ever seen. 
and it was week three. Do y'all remember this? Yes, because I had the <laughs> over, and it lost because the game ended in a fucking tie. The two teams, they just gave up yeah. in overtime. They just yeah. they just stopped playing. It was week three. They just stopped playing didn't, the game. Didn't Cincinnati punt from plus territory? Or maybe Philly did. One team did. Like, there was really – yeah, they were playing like a bunch of bitches in overtime. Oh, I remember, I remember – yeah, I, I remember them about. taking. I remember them taking knees at the end of overtime. Yeah, and I was oh. like, "What the fuck are we doing?" I was thinking about that game probably a couple weeks ago. Every now and then, that game does come across my mind because I remember that went to overtime, and I forget what the total was, but it was either a point or a half point under the total. I was like, "Okay, sweet. I just need a team to win this game in the overhits," and it ended in a fucking tie. Yeah. That, so yeah. I mean, to answer your question, I remember that game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this matchup just makes me mad. Is all I'm trying to say. But uh, Chris, what's your pick? Well, now, yeah, I'm back in a bad <laughs> mood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. I'm, the, I'm ta- no, you're good. I'm taking the Bengals uh, minus two and a half on this one. Um, y- yeah, last week was good for the Eagles. They whomped up on the Giants. You, I bet the Giants. Maybe people are like, hey, you know, things aren't as bad as they seem here. Uh, no, the Giants are a fucking, or they are a disaster. Um, I, so I think Eagles come back down to earth. I think the Bengals kind of maybe win this one handedly, honestly. I don't trust the Eagles whatsoever. Um, the Eagles defense, it's like, oh, they're kind of figuring it out. They haven't played a real quarterback in three weeks. Last time they played a real quarterback was Tampa Bay. Baker Mayfield, they hung 33 on them. So I just – I don't buy anything the Eagles are selling. I'm taking the Bengals minus two and a half. Uh, Will, what are you taking? I'm also on the Bengals. Not only Damn because it. the – sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I made this – I have it circled. Um, I uh, I'm not – I may, I'm taking this for a couple of different reasons. One, the Eagles are sort of imploding, and the Bengals, they're still trying to be competitive. They, they got to win some of these games. Uh, and so they're not a, a dog, but they're kind of like in the, in the sense of like a hungry dog runs fast. They kind of need this. The, the, they need to win, to win like win. every game, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> and so. For that reason, I'm taking the Bengals minus two. Um, Sean? All, all of the research uh, that I did today is telling me to take the Eagles. Um, Bengals haven't won a home game yet. Uh, Saquon Barkley cannot be stopped. He's averaging 166 yards a game, which is absolutely Bonkers insane. Uh, the Bengals defense is terrible on the run game and just kind of all around. Uh, but congrats on your eight sacks on the Giants, though, on Daniel Jones <laughs> and holding uh, a newly activated Nick Chubb to 22 yards. Um, but both teams have some great offensive numbers, so I'm going to go with another over here, over 47 and a half. Dangerous. It is dangerous, but I live on the edge, so. It's going to end in 23-23 tie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we move on, I forget, I do have a trendsetter stat written down. Got to throw it out there. Burrow and his career against team against non-divisional opponents, 30-12-3 and three ATS. So, love. Yeah, have he's already played that many games? I mean, this is... This is like five or six fifth seasons. Year, fifth year in the league, yeah. Damn, I'm really bad at numbers. Anyway. He's hurt a lot, so I get that, but... Yeah, that is true. But... Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was yeah, that was a smart thing of me to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have those sometimes. <laughs> uh... Yeah, looking back, that was smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, moving on. Bills at the Seahawks. The Seahawks are home dogs by three. Um, 
I don't really have much to say about this game uh, without really going into my pick, but I'm going to throw it to Sean first. All right. Um, I've got, I've, I'm double dipping in this game. Uh, first, I'm going to go Bills minus three. Um, Bills are on a roll. Uh, two straight wins. Uh, Josh Allen is locked in. 12 touchdowns, no picks, which is crazy for him. Yeah. Um, and I think that should give them a pretty good shot on the road. Um, Seattle's coming off a solid win, road win, actually, against Atlanta. Um, they're 0-1 as home underdogs. Um, I think if Allen can just keep it keep it clean, don't throw any picks, don't make any stupid mistakes, um, they could take this one easy. And, you know, Seattle's run defense, they're giving up 146 yards a game. So watch out for James Cook. He's going to be in the kitchen cooking, pun intended. Um, again, I'm also on the over here, over 47 and a half. Um, I'm honestly just loving overs this week. Um, and I did some I did some digging into uh, our our friends over at the Trend Center on their app. Uh, I made my own little trend, and um, the Bills and the Seahawks have an impressive over streak dating back to 1989. Uh, these two teams have met 11 times, and the over has hit 10 of those 11 times. Adding. So. Count me in on that, please. What is it? Uh, it's 46 and a half. Adding it. Hell yeah. Uh, so let's just throw it to you then, Chris. What else you got in this game? Hold on. I'm writing it down. Um, cool. <laughs> well, I'm also double dipping because uh, I just took the over. And I'm also on the Bills. Um, bills look like they are back in fuck you mode. They're just kind of steamrolling everyone. The Seahawks, I know they just beat the Falcons. Kind of a fluky win. Got three turnovers and a scoop and score. You're not getting that against the Bills, who, I mean, like you said, Josh Allen hasn't turned the ball over once this season. That's insane to think. Uh, so, yeah, Bills, um, also Seahawks, no DK. That's not great. I know they have other weapons. Kenneth Walker is good, but I think the Bills are just, when they get, like, in this mode, it's very hard to stop them. And I just don't think the Geno Smith-led Seahawks are going to be able to get in their way. So, yeah, Bills minus three. Uh, Will, what are you taking? I just have the over in this game. Uh, I Both teams have been Shit. scoring. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> All right. Uh, under. <laughs> I had it written down. Uh, but both of the teams, both of these teams, like, They've been scoring like pretty significantly in in the majority of their games. Um, I, I, that's pretty much all I all I got, honestly. Um, but I love all the reasons that you guys got. Uh, I, I really have nothing else to add, so I'm gonna move on. Uh, I got the over over for 46. Uh, okay, next game. I can't remember if we were gonna talk about this or not, uh, but I have it written down, and we're gonna talk about it. It's the Bears and the Commanders. Um, commanders are home dogs by two and a half. Uh, I learned about a half hour ago that Jaden Daniels is questionable. Um, I saw that he went out with the injury, but I didn't know that he was, you know, I thought it, I thought it was pretty, you know, he's, he's fine. He's going to play. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. He didn't um, practice today. Didn't practice today. It is Wednesday. It is Wednesday, my dudes. Um, but okay. Let's get into it straight up. I'm taking the over. I'm taking over 43. I even with Marcus Mariota, I I feel like this offense has got something. You know, it's not just Jaden Daniels. They have a, a beat, they have a pulse. Uh the Bears, their defense is fairly, fairly good. Um, but also the Bears really haven't beaten anyone. Um and so I think they're gonna give up some. I think the commanders are definitely going to give up some points. Um, I'm taking over 43 and a half. Uh, Chris, what do you think? Well, this is either going to be a really good week or a really bad week for us, Will, because I agree. Um, <laughs> I, over 43 and a half. 
Um, yeah, congratulations to the Commanders. You held the Panthers to seven points. Um, you still suck. Uh, Caleb Williams is probably going to have a field day on this one. And Jane Daniels or not, I mean, look, at Marcus Mariota out here putting up numbies in relief. Shit. <laughs> um, he did, he could have half a good game, as good of a game as he had last week. And this should still hit the over. Um, yeah. Over 43 and a half. I think I was tempted to double dip and take the Bears, but I already have a lot of minus signs. I don't want another one. So, yeah, Bears, Manders, over 43 and a half. Sean, clean sweep. Yeah, clean sweep. Uh, over, 40, over, over 43 and a half. Uh, like I said, I love the overs this week. Um, I'm addicted, guys. It's it's Manders overs. Um, I can't stop. I won't stop. Uh, they let me down last week against the piss poor Panthers. But, yeah, like you said, Mary. They did. Came in. They, did I, down. they scored 40 points. <laughs> I, well, no, I didn't. I didn't say they let me. I meant – like they were facing a piss poor okay. Panthers team oh, okay. that can't score. Gotcha. That's gotcha. what I meant. I'm sorry. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, Mariota putting up numbies, as you had mentioned, after Jaden Daniels went down. Um, but yeah, we'll keep that one short and sweet. Uh, but I am going to double dip and I am going to take a plus sign. Uh, Manders plus two and a half. Um, I am going to operate under the impression that Jaden Daniels is good to go. Um, Manders, undefeated at home, and dogs. Bears, 2-0 and on the road, 0-2 oh on the road. Um, they're a little hot right now, though. Uh, winning three in a row, uh, all at home. Uh, this will be the toughest defense the Manders have yet to face, though. Um, but I do love the dog spread here. Um yeah, I expect if Jaden is good to go, I think these spreads will flip. So I'm just going to get at it while it's early and bet it while it's hot. That that being said, he's probably not going to play. But we will see. <laughs> if okay. if Mariota covers, then he is forever my king. But <laughs> Bring him back. Bring him back. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly... Not a fuck, half bad not? idea. <laughs> not a half bad idea. <laughs> if we're gonna suck, why not yeah. just relive the the glory days, quote unquote? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, moving on. Sunday night football, uh, kind of the last game we're really gonna really dive into here, uh, because the Monday night football sucks. Um, but uh, Sunday night football, Cowboys at the 49ers. 49ers are beat the hell up. Uh, Cowboys look really bad. Uh, and the 49ers are home favorites by four points. Um, both, uh, both, both have their pros and cons. Oh, man, I don't, but Sean, what do you think? Uh, so not a total from me, uh, on this one, fellas, but, uh, this one's pretty simple. Uh, if you're a trend center follower. Um, I'm going with Cowboys plus four. Uh, there are 48 trends active for this game. Eight are for the under. The other 40 are in favor of the Cowboys. Go with the numbers. It's really not a hard decision for me, honestly. And that's really all I got to say. Uh I'm going to throw it to Will. I'm also on the Cowboys. They're coming off the bye, I think. Um, yes. 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 Uh, they're going to be rested. The Niners, man, they're just beat the hell up. Debo Samuel, he's probably not going to play. Uh, just getting out of the hospital for pneumonia. That shit can fuck you up for a while. Uh, Brennan Ayuk, out for the season. Uh, George Kittle went down with a uh, with an injury. Uh, he'll Again. probably play. I I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But they have some other pieces that are hurting on the Niners, uh, and I think this is a uh, a bounce back week for the Cowboys. Um, they uh, wasn't their last game. They got their shit rocked by by the Lions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is a, a great bounce back game. Great after the bye game. Let's do it. Cowboys plus four. Grays. Um, well, as a as a George Kittle fantasy over, he or owner, he is he is questionable every single every single week. Hmm. That's accurate, yes. And he, he always comes out and puts up fifteen to twenty points. So he'll he'll probably be good to go. Okay. Raise. That's another clean sweep. I uh, I thought I was going to be the contrarian on this one, but yeah, it's Cowboys plus four and a half. Um, you talk about it, just like a hunger dog runs faster game. That the Cowboys need to win this game. Like their season is on life support right now. It is done so if they lose. Um, so yeah, they need it more. And like you said, Niners are, I mean, half their teams in the hospital. Um, D- yeah, I didn't know Debo had pneumonia. I just saw I left with an illness. That's uh, yikes. Yeah, he left <laughs> um, with an illness to the hospital. I didn't know he was in the hospital. I just saw I left with an illness. I didn't know he went to the hospital. That's bad. So even if he does play, he ain't going to be 100%. Uh, so I guess, yeah, Kittle and Juwan Jennings out there. Um, and plus, yeah, Cowboys off a of bye. They're getting healthy. I think Parsons uh, and Deron Bland are probably going to play in this game. So I like that. So yeah, give me the give me the Cowboys plus four and a half. This game's gonna be close. Um, I don't want really want them to win this game because I like that they suck. So yeah, maybe they lose by field goal. Okay. There we go. That's Sunday night football. Moving on, we have our sure fire picks of the week. Uh I lost my sure fire pick last week uh by a point. Uh thank you to the Packers. Um just kidding. Fuck them. Um, but uh, but yeah, our surefire picks of the week. Uh, Chris, what is your surefire double unit play of the week looking like this week? I'm glad you asked, Will. It is a game we already talked about. It is the Bills minus three. And I've got a stat from our friends at Trend Center. And it's a doozy. So since 2001, in weeks er, in games played between weeks two and fifteen, when a road favorite who was favored by less than six and a half, <laughs> uh, or who's coming to the game favored by six and a half or less than six and a half, and their last game went over the total, that team is 126, 64, and five against the spread, covering in sixteen straight games. Uh so yeah. Damn. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. I don't think <laughs> I said that the the factors of the stat right. All you need to know is 126, 64, and 5, 16 in a row. It's the Bills minus three. They are a fucking wagon. They're going to steamroll Geno Smith's bitch ass. So, yes, give me the Bills minus three. Uh, Will, what is your surefire guaranteed not to lose play of the week? So... I did just say fuck the Packers, but I do need the Packers here. Uh, it's an over. Very uncharacteristic of me. Uh, it's the Packers Jags over 49. Uh, Jags defense is ass. Trevor Lawrence, not that bad this year. Uh, has only thrown three picks. Uh, he's like 11th in passing yards. Uh, I think... The Jags have some decent offensive weapons. It kind of just decides who kind of just depends on who decides to show up. Uh, And I think the Packers can also put up a decent amount of points. And if they can let up, let up a touchdown or two, I think this over cruises. It's over 49. Lock it in. Uh, I love, I love this over. I saw it and I was just like, over, let's go. I have zero stats to back it up. Probably should look into it. Uh, but yeah, that's what I got. Sean, what is your double unit surefire play of the week? Well, it's not a double unit. It's a triple unit. Oh, fuck. And my triple unit surefire guaranteed to win pick of the week is the Cowboys plus four. Both Brock Purdy and Dak Prescott. Oh, by the way, um, I'm on a heater on these. I've won five in a row. Of my shirt, my surefire picks. I don't know if y'all knew that or not, but I didn't. 
Um, both Brock Purdy and Dak Prescott are under immense pressure. They might as well be making diamonds or, you know what I mean? But yes, heading into week eight, Sunday night football matchup, uh, coming off of turnover, heavy performances, uh, Purdy threw three picks against the chiefs. Prescott had two in the blowout loss against Detroit, uh, it comes. It really comes down to which quarterback can not fuck up. Um, Dallas is three and zero straight up on the road, while San Fran is just two and four against the spread as single digit favorites. Um, despite the 49ers ranking thirteenth in PR plus and ninth in EPA, uh, they are dealing with major injury concerns and uh i kind of think that leaves some doubt about uh purdy's effectiveness and without his full arsenal uh we've seen that purdy kind of isn't that great uh but yeah like i said oddly enough the cowboys excel on the road kind of the reverse of of last year uh you know, but they've they've had their their wins against weaker teams like the Browns, the Giants, the Steelers. Um, a week ago, if this line, this line might have been double digits. It, okay. it very well could have been double digits. Yeah. But uh, the 49ers just abysmal loss to the the Chiefs raised a few eyebrows. Uh, but I think. The Cowboys bye week, it came at exactly the right time uh, coming off that humiliating loss. Um, I feel confident. I feel really confident that Dallas could keep this close or even pull off the upset. Um, I'm not going to I'm not going to bet money line, but I will be putting three units on Dallas to cover this game. Hell yeah. Let's wow. rock. the. Is that the first triple unit play of, of the year? That is the first triple play unit play of the year. Uh, the last triple unit play was also on the Cowboys uh, when they faced the Eagles at home last year, I believe. And that was my my big brain. Just like they have to win this game, and it's kind, they're kind of in the same situation. They have to win this game. They they, they have to keep it close. They they fucking stomp the Eagles. Okay. The, yeah, I can't remember which one yeah. that was. I think they were dogs too, but they won outright. So, is that a trend? Could that be a trend? Maybe. <laughs> if it happens again, it's a trend. <laughs> we'll um, see. We will. We will see. Okay, moving on. Now that the sure fires are done, uh, let's go into the extra plays of the week. Sean, what are your extra plays? What else do you got? All right. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I got five more. Um, first up, uh, Colts plus five. Uh, surprisingly, uh, the Colts are only one game behind the Texans. Uh, they'll, they're will they definitely going to want to keep this one close. Um, they kept it close week one at home. Um, I think they could fuck around and do it again. Uh, Colts are looking more and more healthy as well. Uh, Jonathan Taylor should be returning. Uh, Houston defense gives up the most passing touchdowns of any other team, and hopefully Tony is a little more healed up than he was uh, last week against the Dolphins. So, yeah, give me the Colts plus five. Chris, I saw you shaking your head, calling him Tony. He hates that I do that, but that's why I keep doing it. Um, <laughs> what, talking like your butt buddies or something? Oh. <laughs> I'm just All joking. Right. All right. right. All right. Yeah, you're only butt buddies with Chris. <laughs> All right. Yes, let's it's jealousy. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's relax. All right. Um, next up, uh, it's another Ravens over. Um, I'm addicted. Ravens Browns over 44 and a half. Uh, plus, it's Jameis time. Uh, he may fuck around and throw a couple touchdowns and show he should be the real starting QB for the Browns. Uh, over 44 and a half. Yeah, give me that. Um, next, I've got the uh, Chiefs minus 10. 
Uh, Raven Raiders are averaging uh, 15 points per game. Uh, they did beat the Chiefs last year, uh, 20 to 14. Chiefs have won the last four matchups in Vegas by 15. So give me that spread all day long. Uh, next up, we got Saints Chargers under 40 and a half. Uh, this is a Chargers under, plus a few stats for you. Uh, unders are one and four in SoFi. Uh, seven of eight have gone, seven of their last eight have gone under, plus there are three trends on the Trend Center app that support this under as well. Um, next up I got, or last up, Panthers Broncos under 41 and a half. Um, this game's just going to stink on one side. Um, yeah, I'm just more or less betting a goose egg on the Panthers. Uh, Bryce is back. Uh, Broncos defense is, yeah, did you not see that, Chris? No, I, I did not see that. Yeah, they're they're starting him against uh, the best passing defense in the league. So is that's that, real great for him. But is is Dalton hurt or no? <laughs> so no. they're just all right. They're just throwing him. They're throwing him in the fire. Um, he just needed a break. He just needed a breather. Yeah, you need a four something. week breather. Yeah. <laughs> What's the? Hold on. G- continue. Continue. Uh, the line is nine. If you're wondering, uh, okay, yeah, we'll see. Uh, not in favor of the Panthers, if you were curious, but uh, oh, <laughs> well, then in that case, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Bryce is back. Um, like I said, uh, Broncos defense is like the best passing defense in the entire league. Um, this is not the game I would have chosen to bring it back for. So I'm going under all day here, under 41 and a half. Uh, Chris, what else you got? Uh, go to Will. I'm looking up something real quick. Okay, go to Will. Uh, I'm looking up a potential ad real quick. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we didn't talk about the Monday night game, but I'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, Giants at the Steelers. Uh, I'm taking the Steelers, minus six and a half. Uh, listen, we coined this phrase. On the pod for a reason, Daniel the Danny Dimes is afraid uh, of the dark shit. Yep. Okay. So, gotcha. I'm I'm fucking taking the Steelers minus six and a half. Uh, he needs his sleep. He needs to go to sleep. He's so tired out there on the field at night. I feel um, that. He's also not very good. Uh, but, um, <laughs> I think that, you know, we were questioning why they were putting in Russ. Uh, Russ kind of put it together, you know, um, they, they put up a, a pretty good game against the jets. The jets, I still think have a pretty decent defense. Um, but they were putting it together. Like they were just figuring it out. Like, Oh, we just need to throw it to George Pickens and he'll like make a play, but then he'll also do something really stupid or, or crazy. I don't know. He's weird. Uh, and I'm, I'm beginning to think that you know, maybe Russell Wilson wasn't like terrible. He just his first year in Denver, a, he was terrible. He just needed a good coach. That's that's, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because hmm. you have hmm. Pete Carroll in Seattle, great coach, Hall of Famer, uh, and now you got Tomlin. It it just sounds like he just needs someone smart behind him. He needs stability. Yeah, he just. I don't. He just can figure. Coaches can just figure it out. I don't know. Uh, so maybe he's not terrible. Um, so I'm taking the Steelers minus six and a half. Um, I'm also taking the Colts plus five and a half or plus five. Uh, it it kind of divisional games. They're weird. They they're only one by, game behind the Texans. Uh, they have a guy going to keep it close, and I feel like there's been there's some trend or uh, about the Colts going to Houston or something. Cause I know there's one against it's Jacksonville. Colts against Jacksonville. No, well, the Colts are also uh seven and one against the spread in Houston. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so I'm taking the Colts plus five. Uh, and then I'm also taking Chargers under 40 and a half. Uh, 
Spencer Rattler is not very good. And the Chargers have a really good defense. And that's my that's my place. Uh right. just three extra plays. And Chris, what do you uh, what do you got? What do you All extra right. plays? We'll start out with the latest addition to the card. Now that I know Bryce Young is starting, it is Panthers team total under 14 and a half. Um, they could only God. they could only score seven against the god awful Commanders defense. You expect me to believe Bryce Young is going to score more than that against like twice as much as that against a like you said, Sean, best pass defense in the league. I don't think so. We saw what the Broncos did to poor Spencer Rattler. Bryce Young is going to be in hell. <laughs> so, yeah, Panthers team total under 14 and a half. You said it. It's Jameis time, baby. Browns plus eight and a half. Uh, <laughs> this team actually respects him. They want to play for him. They don't despise him like they do to Sean Watson. I think Jameis might fuck around. Man, he might sling it. He might sling it to the wrong team a couple times, but hey, that's just what Jameis does. That's yeah. um, just Jameis. That's just Jameis being – you take it. You take the good with the bad. Um, also, Ravens, no pun intended, flying high after a dominant Monday night game. Maybe they can make down to earth a little bit. Just don't score as many points like the Browns keep it within a touchdown. Um <laughs> Why do the schedule makers despise the Jacksonville Jaguars? How do they not have a bye this week? Uh, I don't question. know what you mean. Two weeks in London, and they have to play. Oh, I see. Yes, <laughs> I, I see what you mean. Now. <laughs> like, that doesn't make any sense. Packers minus four, um, just for the fact that the Jags are going to be sleeping through this game. Uh, and the Packers are a very good football team. So, yeah, it's, it's Packers minus four. And then we'll close out with a couple stinky unders. Start out Cardinals Dolphins under 46 and a half. Cardinals coming up, flying cross country on short rest after Monday night football. Uh, maybe they're a little sleepy. I believe Tua is coming back this week. Um, so it might take him a little bit to get going. Uh, so yeah, under 46 and a half. Um, thought I had a trend run. Oh, also, potentially a weather game. Heard uh, could be a very windy game in Miami. So, lots of running the football. Last one. M maybe my favorite stinky under. Definitely my favorite stinky under of the week. Jets, Pats, under 41 and a half. Both these offenses suck. Um, I don't see a way where, I mean, it's possible neither team scores 20 points. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is – he's old. He's not very good. He's – like, this offense blows. They were better last year with Zach Wilson. That's a fact. Yeah, that is a they fact. Better record, better stats, almost across the board. I, I – the Jets are bad. Um, and the Patriots, they suck. So, yes, Jets, Pats, under 41 and a half. And then, yeah, let's uh, let's turn this ship around. Let's win some bets this week. Yes, I would love to win some bets this week. Well, seems... well, if <laughs> we're kind of lockstep on a bunch of these, so. yeah, we're we're kind of all in. <laughs> we're kind of all in with you. So is, we're we're, we're either ready. going down on this. This isn't my ship. fault. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't my fault. I made the picks. I know, I just but we're to have the same thing. But it's like we're all dying on this ship together or we ride off into the sunset God for this please. week at least <laughs> yeah so what could go wrong <laughs> yeah if we all win um, there may not be a pod next week <laughs> if we all lose there definitely won't be because <laughs> we'll be homeless <laughs> right gotta send my kids to college I have a cat <laughs> Gotta send my cat to cat school for his AIDS medication. Jeez. He has HIV. <laughs> Just we're airing out medical records on the pod now. He doesn't take I think, anything. I think we've I think we've said that the cat has AIDS by now. Well, Maybe. he has a home. That's what he has now. Right, he has a safe place to live. Not, Not on with the me streets. <laughs> 
So you guys terrorize this poor thing. Every day. <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, I do want to. I do want to comment on the uh, the schedule maker thing that you said, Chris. Um, this is the third game in a row that the Panthers have a three to three thirty start. That just does not sit right with me. Are they? They're on the road this week, aren't they? I know. Yeah, they're they're so playing in Denver. This one makes sense. But this is the third game in a row where they get like some type of, you know, midday witching hour, fucking start time, and this 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 just pisses me off. Yeah, last week definitely didn't make any sense. I don't remember who they played the week before. It was the Fal- It was the Falcons at home, and then it was the Manders. Uh, it was either at home or yeah, away, but whatever. Um, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that just does that. That just really rubs me the wrong way for some reason. Because well, this be this oh. this team does not deserve the, a three to three thirty start time. They just don't. Well, you'll be happy to know that play at noon next week. Great. Against the Saints. <laughs> <laughs> They've yet to have their Monday night game. They play on Monday night. Or their primetime game. There's, they might not have one. I thought every team gets a... We don't have a Thursday, so... Well, we don't have a Thursday, but we had the we had a Monday. Does every team... Every team has, game? like, one primetime game. They shouldn't have Pretty to sure. That. They shouldn't. No, they shouldn't. But I'm not seeing. But yeah, oh, I agree. No, that's sorry. I'm looking to try to find. No, you're good. Time. That does. That is stupid. I I do hate that when two eat. That happened to the Titans a couple. Maybe it was more than a couple years ago. I forget who they were playing an East Coast team at home, and it was a three thirty kick. I mean, yeah. like that. That's I think weird. it's more of a jealousy thing than anything but because like i would love to go to a a home game that's a three thirty start time i would love that yeah because those games hammock. rock yeah just stay at the bar longer get to the bar early stay there longer yeah there's, there's so many noon games you watch all the all the noon games at the bar and exactly. then and then there's only like three or four afternoon games, you're not miss, missing that much football. Yeah, like here in here in Tennessee, like the, the bar is open at 10. Kickoff's at noon. It's like you got to leave the bar by 11.15, 11.30 to get to the game. It's I like, got to eat. I yeah, got to have like five beers. At it's least. A lot. Yeah. Um, I wrote down a couple things here just – Little talking points. Um, did you see what uh, you said that the Jets stink, Chris? I don't disagree with that. But did you see what uh, Julian Edelman said? I did not. Okay. Um, he oh, said yeah. that. I saw that. Yeah. He said that um, Tom Brady kind of like changed the game again because he, you know, he switched teams when he was in his older phase won a super bowl and then he said that now everyone thinks they can do it and <laughs> it's it's kind of just like a big middle finger to aaron Rodgers, which i'm okay with because nobody really likes this guy right i like, hate him I, yeah, agree. Like, I think i said <laughs> i said that last week i've grown to genuinely hate him <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's more, I mean, yeah, Tom Brady, he, he was, he might have been the first switch teams when he was old and win a Super Bowl, but old guys been doing it like Joe Montana with this, uh, the Chiefs, right. Brett, Favre, Brett Favre went to the Vikings, to the Jets and then the Vikings, which, oh, I want, I want Aaron Rodgers to go to the Vikings. So that would be hilarious. And then just throw a crippling interception to end your career. Um, oh, so funny. Um, but I think he changed the game, Tom Brady did, and the way that we look at older quarterback switching teams mm-hmm. as to be like, oh, they can still win a Super Bowl. We're just like, right. Aaron Rodgers, like, he's been riding that. Uh, granted, he did win multiple MVPs, so I'm not saying he's a bum or anything. But he's been riding that one Super Bowl win that was, like, 
15 years ago for a long time. Yep. Yep. So I'm just like, he's shown many, many, many times he cannot get it done in the playoffs. So I don't really know why Jets fans were like, oh, we let's just add a quarterback and we're, we're Super Bowl bound, or at least like going to make a run in the playoffs. This team sucks. I mean, <laughs> I mean, truth be told, that is that has been the Jets' biggest need for many, many years. But like, he's just too—he's just too old, dude. He's just—he's just, yeah, he's just, just like—he can't do it. He's gonna die soon. If he didn't tear his Achilles, I would more understand it. But now you've got a 40 – he's 41, correct? Or is he 39? Uh, he's old. you got an old old quarterback coming off a torn Achilles, and you expect him to just line 40. it up 40 with just a not good offense. Like, Brees Hall is really good. Garrett Wilson is – he's got a lot of talent. He just hasn't really shown a lot in the NFL yet. So they had to bring in Devontae Adams, who, I mean, didn't do shit last week, but first week with the team, whatever. But, yeah, I just – I love it because I I just hate Aaron Rodgers. But, yeah, it's – it is just stunning to see the comparisons from last week – or last year's Jets team with Zach Wilson to this year and how they were significantly better with Zach Wilson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they uh, fallen, fallen, fallen like a like a jet out of the air, and then they were like, "Let's, let's, let's mm-hmm. trade for Devonte Adams. That'll fix everything. That'll fix every, that'll fix the bad defense." I, I get the need for Devonte. You know, it's familiarity. Yeah. I I get it, but God, how long has he been away from from Rogers now? Like. Three, he, four seasons. Like he was in, he was in Vegas for, yeah, three or four years. Yeah, and, but yeah, uh, and also like, I mean, he's he is still good, but I feel like they got him more just to keep Rogers happy, as opposed to like trying to make this team better. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's it's tough to say like either way if Devontae Adams has lost a step because he has had such a dog shit room of quarterbacks since since Aaron Rodgers. Like it's it's incredibly hard to I don't know, kind of factor in his ability when the ability of the person throwing him the ball is incredibly low varies and is also incredibly low sure. Gar- Gardner Minshew you know if they take him out and then they then he gets put in as a backup he'll, he'll be he'll be great but uh you know doesn't really doesn't really have that same magic but, oh uh, the yes and and the Raiders are going back to Gardner this week <laughs> so yeah it could be could be the right right week to to get the Raiders then AOC get hurt Yes, uh, I think he broke maybe. his thumb. Yeah, I think I saw something. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, now it's backup Gardner. So, yeah, all bets are off. He's got nothing <laughs> to lose. Um, um, well, Will, you mentioned uh, that Russ, you know, in his coaching stuff, but you said that Pete Carroll was a Hall of Famer. Um, I don't doubt that. But do you guys think that he's going to, like, He's gonna make it there. Like, is he gonna be in attendance for his Hall of Fame induction? Because the dude is seventy. First. Yeah, yeah. Is he gonna <laughs> die before he gets into the Hall of Fame? He's seventy three, and he's still going strong. He yeah, looks no, I damn think, good. For I think he's gonna. Um, I don't want to jinx anything, but I think he he's got a while left. He's he may be the first. Hundred. He may be the first human to live to 150. See, I don't want to put a number on it, and then like two days later, <laughs> something tragic happens. 
but um well you you can't you can't stop tragedy but you know <laughs> but i just yeah okay fair but yeah i think he, <laughs> that was he was always the guy who's like hey you know who the oldest coach in the league is pete carroll and everyone's like what he looks so good he's so he looks so fit blah 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 blah. that was the thing for like five years yeah <laughs> so it's like yeah he is old but like he'll get in in the next like 10 years so yeah i, I don't know what the he's... rule for coaches is if you have to also be retired for a certain number of years i don't know man it took bill coward forever that's and true. uh he's a much better coach than Pete Carroll. Yeah, it took him forever to get in the Hall of Fame. That's fair. So yeah, maybe he won't go. Yeah, I guess that is true with coaches that don't go in right away. So I, I mean I, so, yeah, I just I maybe that, he won't. Maybe he'll die. It just it just <laughs> popped it, it just popped in my dome, dude. I I don't know. Like it got me thinking a little bit. I was like, I don't know if he'd fucking make it there, dude. Like <laughs> like I mean, as long as it's not years from now i think you'll be fine but is he yeah. um did is this like his first year not being a head coach or was that last year this is huh? his first, this is his first year not being a head coach oh yeah okay so he probably won't get inducted like first ballot because however long you need to be retired will also be he also retired the same year as fucking Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick's not retired. Technically. He's not, he's not retired? He was fired. Oh, shit. <laughs> eh, well, yeah. never mind. I see, but yeah, like kind of like what we were saying. I don't know what the precedent is with coaches getting in. Like, like you said, it took Cower forever to get in, and he was... He was a better coach than Pete Carroll, so I don't know how long it's going to take Carroll to get in. But I would imagine, yeah, he, he'll he get in. So I, I mean, with the NFL, granted, it's, again, different with coaches, but it's not incredibly difficult to get the NFL Hall of Fame. <laughs> or pro football Hall of Fame, excuse me. Uh-huh. Do you like – so with, with pro football, does that – is that would that like include like Nick Saban? I don't know. Would it? No. Uh, no? no. It's a different, completely different Hall of Fame. I mean, they have a college football Hall of Fame. Yeah. But, but they have, no. do they have like a regular football Hall of Fame? I don't know. Uh, no, they don't. No. Okay. Well. <laughs> in in uh, Canton, no. All right. But no. He he coached the Dolphins for a little bit. Um, yeah, and he sucked. Yeah. <laughs> um. Jeez. I mean. Okay. Where mentioned Bill. I. You mentioned Bill Belichick. I don't even think we've touched on the fact that he's dating that twenty-four-year-old. God Just bless him. Slinging dong. <laughs> Just, what the fuck, dude? God bless him. How have we Just, not talked about this yet? Just lining it up in the end zone. I've seen that, like. It's not that chick's first go around with a seventy year old man. Jesus Christ. From what I've read, she's she's been at this game for a little bit. I mean, dude, chase that bag. Exactly. I, I get it, but like, god damn. He's a Hall of Fame seventy four year old. Just that just I don't want to say this, but I'm gonna say it. Uh could you just imagine you don't being have to say it. Being a chick yeah. and just having Bill Belichick on top of you, like, no. like <laughs> that's just so gross. No, I can't imagine that. <laughs> he probably, probably has honest. a pretty good uh, game plan in bed. <laughs> and he's probably like, "I'm gonna lay on my back, and you do. <laughs> I, I'm not moving." <laughs> yeah, he's like, what the fuck am I paying for? <laughs> We... <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We'll we'll get off that subject real fast because. I mean, I feel like we gotta talk about it. 
D hop I... to the Chiefs. Oh, whatever. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why does Hold it up. Have, why does it I have was, to be them? I was up at 5 a.m. this morning, and because <laughs> I wake up, I wake up fucking early. Scrolling on my phone. Sean's a farmer. Then I no, I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a farmer. I'm like the opposite of a farmer. Um, I throw I, food away. <laughs> <laughs> I was scrolling on my phone, and then I get the ESPN alert that D Hop is being traded to the Chiefs, and I was like. Hmm. Just yeah. swiped it away. I was like, cool, whatever. Like, what? I mean, we're sellers. I mean, like, I'm I'm not going to be surprised if uh, maybe Landry is the next to go. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're probably not going to trade Jeff just because that is a guy to, like, build around. He's got a heavy contract. No one's going to want to take that on. He's still young. Um, he's still pretty young. But that Jeff is a guy you should kind of build a defense around, and you're kind of already doing that with uh, uh, Sweat and, you know, all those other young guys. But, yeah, dude, uh, it, it's a fire sale right now. I think anyone's up for grabs, honestly. Uh, we traded Ernest Jones today, too. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah. Yeah. We just got him like eight weeks ago, yeah. <laughs> like literally eight weeks ago. <laughs> I'm just so like whatever with this team right now. Like I was kind of with you, Sean. I saw that and I was like, well, I don't like it was the Chiefs, but I'm not. It was like, whatever, just get it. Like we knew it was going to happen. Just get it over with. Um, when we do eventually trade pretty much everyone who's worth a shit, if we don't get one motherfucking offensive lineman in one of these deals. I'm going to lose my shit. Because Nicholas Petit Frere is one of the worst offensive linemen I've ever seen. What the hell happened to this guy? Like, he know, was man. never, he was never, like, great or really, like, he was always solid. Like, you weren't, like, you counted on him to not be awful. And now he's just the worst. Like, is he playing hurt? What the hell is going on with this guy? If we can't get one, just, I don't even care if he doesn't work out. At least let's try to get someone in the building who's not a human traffic cone. Because these guys we got right now suck. Aside from a couple. But, I mean, God. Like, just the fact that we're getting a fifth-round pick for D-Hop is atrocious. When Amari Cooper, who, in my opinion, is not really that, like, he's fine. He's nothing special. Gets a third I don't know. That, that's mainly what pissed me off. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the, sorry. I think, I think the Titans sign someone off of someone's practice squad. And it's kind of like, nah, that guy sucks. But to throw him in there, maybe he won't suck. And like, I was hearing someone talk about it on the radio. Uh, I think it was today. Uh, and they were they were talking about right tackle, and he's like, I mean, this was kind of like the year after we drafted Lawan, uh, like right before we drafted uh, Conklin, that they were just like, well, right sides looking rough. Who's gonna who's gonna give up <laughs> the sack this week? Who what what quarterback are we gonna destroy from the right side this week? Uh, and so that's just kind of what it's turned back to. Which is unfortunate, but um, that's uh, I, I'm just kind of wondering when we're gonna, you know, if if we're ever gonna be good again. I mean, I I am just so indifferent about this team right now. I do not care. I watch. Well, I will watch every game because I guess I kind of I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, it won't feel as good when we're back up if we ever get back on top. It won't feel as good if I don't suffer. But I. I just do not care. Yeah. I hate to like keep beating a dead horse. And, you know, I, I say, I've said this many times on this podcast. You should have just signed 
A.J. Brown. That's all you had to do to not fucking suck for the next five to seven years. Because that's what our timeline is going to look like. Is just a five to seven years of just absolute hell again. I've been through this once. I've been through it twice. I've been through it goddamn three times. If you would have signed A.J. Brown, all of your problems would all of these problems would be gone. They would be non-existent. You would not have to had signed D hop in the first place you, for AJ Brown money, who is what six, seven years, eight, eight even years older than he is. Uh, you wouldn't have to sign Calvin Ridley, who cannot catch a ball. He's bitching about his targets. Like, oh, yeah, I need to be targeted earlier in the game. He had the same amount of targets last week. Dropped, like, all of them. Yeah, so I was – I w- last week I was uh, at work. Um, I have to work on Sundays, unfortunately. Um, I was listening to the game, and every, like, down was just like, oh, Mason Rudolph, uh, he's going for Ridley and incomplete. And he just threw his fingertips. Uh, it's drop ball. And I'm just like, what the fuck are we, what, can you not catch a ball? Like, what the fuck are we paying you all this money for? Okay. But anyways, you could have, if you had AJ Brown, you could have gotten like some, if, even if you wanted to move on from Tannehill, you probably could have gotten some quarterback on the free, on the free agent market that would be worth a shit. Like you could like turn into Tannehill like Tannehill was putting up fucking Mahomes numbers with AJ Brown you get rid of him he's like a bottom 20 quarterback in the league he fucking sucked it's just ugh. getting a getting rid of AJ Brown was literally just the nail in the coffin oh yeah it was of it, i i hate having to repeat myself on it but it's just so true like oh it makes me so mad it, it makes was me so mad it was the turning point i mean you can look at that exact moment we have been dog shit ever since then. i mean yeah john robertson should be in prison and uh you're talking about Kevin ridley's targets um he's been bitching about his targets the last two weeks you care to guess how many times a football has been thrown in his direction 24 17 okay 17 targets in two weeks. Last week? week? Uh, two no, weeks, in okay. two weeks. And he's been like... – <laughs> he was targeted – he was three catches on nine targets, whoop de doo uh, last week. And then the week before against Indy, no catch – which that was – no catches on eight targets. That was one thing that pissed me off when he was like, oh, I'm just not getting targeted enough. It's like you had eight – like you had eight targets. Like what more do you want for a wide receiver two? That's insane. He had more targets that week than uh, in the week he gets Indy than the two previous weeks combined. And he's complaining. Which, I mean, I don't blame him for signing really because he was a good receiver last year. He's just been awful. Well, he had that one, one good game against the Jets. And I mean, he, he'll get traded and then he'll probably end up being amazing. I just, I mean, I'm just back to being like, this team sucks. I don't really care about anything. Uh, Brian Callahan, he might just be awful. He might. That be. fourth down call was yeah. horrendous. That was what the fuck, man. Why would you was, do that? I don't know. Last week was the first time where it's like, oh, the coach is just being terrible. Like before, it was like, okay, the players suck. So what do you really expect them to do? But last week was like, this was one of the worst coach games I've seen from the Tennessee Titans as a whole in year, probably since Rabel's first year. Yeah. You, had a, you had a 10 point lead on the Buffalo bills. 34 straight points, 34 straight po- fucking points. I had Titans plus nine. And I was a little, I was a little, <laughs> so I was a little salty. <laughs> oh, we want to wrap up. <laughs> oh Yeah. <laughs> We do. 
It says a minute left on mine. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> it's not It's oh. not showing up on my end. Inside, uh, Titans suck. Will right. Yeah, Titans Let's suck. Take oh, shoot. Home, Will. <laughs> take us Titans home. suck. We'll okay. win on our bets. See you next right. week. Uh, yeah, Let's thank you so here. much for listening and watching. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Any interaction with this really helps us out. Uh, check out the Trend Center app, the greatest tool on the planet for sports bettors. Um, 15% off a premium membership. Uh, link in the bio or use the code TFTM. Um, follow us on everything for the Bandit Parlay if he decides to, to do one. Um, and uh, the Bandit Thursday night pick, I think he's on a two-week heater two, right now. Two in a row. Two in a row. Looking good. Sleeping inside. Being fed. Good for him. Uh, Earning his keep. Yeah. (laughs) He's eating what he kills. Um, uh, But yeah, that's a, that follows and everything. Um, We'll see you next week. There's three of us. Now let's make some money. Ah. Woo. Yay.